Hello guys, it's me again. I uh, felt like making one more video. I feel like most likely after this one I'm done for done with this for a while again, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, since the last video I've learned my lesson that uh, apparently it's really weird to recommend your own video, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, so the goal of this video, uh, well there's multiple things that I wanted to talk about, but I kind of wanted to make it like some sort of strategy test, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to be asking questions during this game about what would you do? And then like, have you think about it yourself? And then I'm going to say what I think is the best solution, uh, which does not necessarily have to be true, but um, you know, it can be food for thought. And um, also, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with which is how do you finish games? Like, how do you win in a short time? I think a lot of people, um, their games go like 40 minutes long every time and whatnot. And my games tend to be short. Like I, you know, my games, probably like my last 50 games, none of them went past 30 minutes. Like win or lose, I play towards, like I play a short game. Um, and this was a game in the semi-final of the beef tournament. Uh, I faced against Matisse. And uh, we're about the same skill level. Um, in rounds prior to this, he had beaten Yui Metal and um, a Divine, which are both really tough opponents. So he, he was really uh, on sort of a win streak there. Um, and we're playing Frisian Marches here, which um, is an interesting map. I really like this map. Um, how do I reveal everything? Uh, for those that don't know, I'm going to reveal slightly to you guys. Um, so a lot of sheep next to your base, and you spawn n like this to each other. Um, so you're relatively close to each other. Both of you get a lot of starting sheep. And then there's all these shoreline fish um, that you can gather. A little bit of information about shoreline fish. Um, so just I'll just mention all the food gather rates. So the berries are the default are 0.66 food a second. The sheep and farms are 0.75. Deer are 0.825. The boar is better than the deer at 0.9. And the shoreline fish is at one food a second. So shoreline fish is by far the best food to gather with vills. It's actually really bad to gather them with boats. Like boats only get like 0.6 or something, like the barrier rate. But with vills, it's really good. Um, so there's a lot of food on this map. So now, um, as for this game, I'm gonna. Um, I just wanted to quickly show you the map to give some uh, food for thought, and now I'm gonna go back to my point of view. So the first question that I have is, what should I produce first? Should I make a scout or should I make a vill? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pause after I ask a question, just a couple seconds, and then I'm gonna give my answer. I think it's really nice on this map to just train vills. Um, when you go for a scout, you're essentially deleting, um, you're deleting a villager, or more than that even, because they take 22 seconds and a villager takes 18. So you're deleting like 1.2 villager or something. And you need to ask yourself, do I think it's worth it to make that sacrifice for an extra scout? And a lot of the maps the answer to that question is yes, because you need a second scout to find more sheep. Uh, and you need to have a lot of sheep to be able to, um, you know, to be to have a good amount of food income in the early early part of the game. But in this map, with the food spawning so close, all the sheep spawning so close, I can just find enough with one scout, and then later I can get onto this quicker gathering shoreline fish. So the second scout isn't really required. And then starting with a vill instead of a scout here gives me a lot more tempo. Uh, I'm gonna be able to age quicker, uh, be aggressive earlier. Um, so it's an interesting to think about, instead of just defaulting to whatever build order you have, like, you know, the standard with French, like, okay, I go to scout. But, you know, you don't have to always play the standards, and um, if you think the other option is better, then you should go for it. And in this case, I think going second scout is good. Uh, we go for the very classic, like, the this build order was basically, like, after one day of playing, <laughs> Uh, AB4 when it came out, this was my build order, this is just the most logical one. You go 2 to gold and then you just rally onto sheep. Uh, and you're gonna get the income to HL. 
I'm gonna speed it up for you guys until we come to another uh, decision point. Because we're just getting for the A-top. So this is why I like, I like to do economically. You leave seven on foot, you build it with four. You can also do three, but I like doing four if you want to put pressure. Um, going four vills on your landmark can really disrupt your opponent. Um, yeah, we're collecting more sheep. We're going to bring these in. We just want to see where his gold mine is. Okay, his gold mine is here. We see how much he mines. Always click. Whenever I see a mine, just instinctively, I'm just watching a wreck right now. Just click on that because uh, then you know how much he gathered and you could consider what he's spending that on. But we're going to bring the sheep home. We're always training vills, you just don't see it because of the overlay. I'm gonna put one more vill on gold to uh, put his knights. And now we're just rallying onto the woods. And then this, so basically the seven vills build up a food bank, so you can put this a knight, and then these four vills can go back to sheep, so you can get a second knight after that if you want. We're aging up really quickly here at four minutes. Um, Okay, so no real decision at the moment. We're just gonna train the knights. We're actually gonna rally to woods. And now the decision will become, are we gonna add an archery range or not? So, um, you know, for example, you could think about gathering for DC now. You know, we're gonna have, um, like looking at this, this is like insane DC spot, a lot of fish. Uh, there's there, you know, the, the fish gather fast, so, you know, getting a TC here would be insane. So the question becomes, okay, how many knights do I want to train? Do I want to go for a TC? Do I want to do it now? Do I want to add archers? Um, and what would be the option that you guys choose? So I'm going to try to be raiding him with knights and, you know, obviously he's going to go uh, pike to counter my knights. So my knights will not get a lot done without archers, so I really like to add archers because that forces him to go at horsemen as well. And then you're disrupting your opponent's build order, which is something you really wanted to do against HRE. So we can see the barracks, we're trying to get scouting information. Um, and I'm gonna add an archery range to go with my knights. Typical French stuff, nothing too complicated yet. However, we are on a really fast timing. Uh, first night being produced at 440. There's a lot of people that only age up when it's 440 because of uh, different builds with scouts and uh, different relaying of the hills, maybe three hills on the landmark. So we're really quick here uh, and we're sure that he can't get our gold. So we're gonna now try to wrap around, see if we can raid his wood line instead because there's nothing here. Um, maybe I don't do that actually, but I should. I should try to have a look here. But yeah, looks like I don't. He's gonna train pikes. And so right now we're just going for um, pikes, uh, I'm sorry, bows and knights. Um, all right, I'm just gonna continue for now. So I, I had a question about these fills, but I'm already giving you the answer basically. Um, how many knights do you want to produce? So how much gold do you want to gather? So since the answer is already out there, uh, I'm sending these fills off of gold now. What I really like to do with French especially, is don't just spam knights endlessly. They're going to produce a lot of pikes and your knights aren't going to be as strong. You want to re-macro. Um, so now that the... Um, that I have enough gold for three knights. Three, not, three knights can put a lot of pressure, they're really good in fights. But the difference between having six knights or three isn't that big because they're kind of countered. So we want to start quite putting our fields on different resources, at least in this matchup I believe that's good. Um, and then the question becomes, what do you want to do? Do you want to... you could think about many things. Um, so, when I'm going Knight Archer, my opponent's gonna go Pike to counter my Knights and then Horseman to counter my Archer. 
So I could think about adding a barracks. That's one of the options. You could also think about, okay, do you want to go blacksmith um, and try to go rams, maybe try to kill him. You could also think about macroing towards the second DC. So you have all these options available to you. So what I think is really good here is to try to get that second DC. Uh, while we already forced a reaction out of him, he's forced to reply to us. Like he, he couldn't just like, you know, go get our gold without making units or go get our stone or DC without making units because we were putting pressure with our uh, Knight Archer. So he's already, you know, having to respond, having to reply. And now we're going to use this window to start gathering stone just slowly. Well, still producing archers as well. Um, so it's important to think about where you want to allocate your vills. And I think it's nice to start getting off of gold here now to re macro onto different things. Um, so this was an interesting thing. Micro wise, his spike is going too far forward. So I, I try to make sure I don't get the. Um, Counter charge attack, I can't think of the name, with the knights, so you don't just charge with the knights because they're gonna get, what's it called, braced, I think. So I lead with my scouts, I let the scout take the first hit so that my knights can attack and I do some free damage. Not that interesting damage. Um, so we're putting a lot of pressure on him with our knight archer, because at this moment um, he can't really do anything about it. And we can make sure that he's not gathering stone and gold, and so that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and he's building up this spike horseman mass as we, as we, this is happening. So as this mass is getting bigger, we're once again going to check out the stone here. Stone is not being gathered. Now this is another, like stra strategically, this is another decision point. Like what do you do now? Um, so I'm going to give you a question. Of, that's like another question. So like I said, every time a couple seconds. So what I think is really important here, and this goes for pretty much any RTS game, is he is really committed to making units right now. He's got two stables, two barracks. So in a way, he's all in to defend our push. And if we stick around, we're going to get overwhelmed because the horsemen are going to go on the archer and then the pikes are going to go on the knight. And we're not just only producing units. Like if we added the barracks, we could have stuck around because we're also adding more units. But we're trying to expand our economy. Well, he isn't. And whenever that's the situation that you're in, you really have to think about pulling back your army. And this is a common mistake people make is that they, for example, there's a lot of like these, these standard things that I know from like RTS experience where it's like, don't Try not to fight while you're aging, because at that point you're weaker because you invested resources in, into an age of. Don't fight while making economic expansion like a TC or, um, you know, if you if you are investing a lot in military and your opponent isn't, like let's say I'm making all this army and he's making a TC, try to kill it or try to counter that because if you're just doing nothing with your army, which is probably the most common mistakes from low elo players is that they just make army, they just stand AFK with it and their opponent makes economic choices, and then they're just like, you know, 10 minutes later, they're just down 20 fills and they just lose. So you have to think about all these options. It's really important. Um, as for now, our decision point is, okay, we need to start thinking about falling back soon. So we can leave our scouts around. Um, we can still get our scouting information. This, this archer was apparently not in my hotkey group. Um, but we need to leave because we're adding a TC and he's not. So we're still like gonna try to trace, chase this, these units away, do some free damage. But most importantly, we're gonna leave because if this suddenly turns into like six horsemen, uh, we're gonna lose our army. So this is, like I said, very important. So we mined enough stone. We're gonna. Um, at this DC, we have pretty good macro right now. And now we're gonna be go back onto gold because we're gonna start making units again. Um, and we're adding some more fills so that we uh, get this DC quicker. And you know, we wanna have fills in this area because this food is super efficient to gather. And now we're switching fills from sheep to wood. We probably should have pulled fills off of sheep, it's a little bit less walking time. But 
the main thing here is we want to have less on sheep because sheep are slower and then more on, on fish because it's faster. So we're still hanging around slightly, but making sure that we can't get caught and trying to gain information to scout. Checking the stone. Is he gathering stone? He isn't. Okay. He's not adding a TC. We also want to know his gold if we can. Um, if he's kind of mining a lot of gold, he might try an H and then we need to punish that. So we need to all in that. We need to... Or by all in you can mean separate things. Um, you could mean like just containing the map, containing him from keeping relics is also an all in in a way. Okay, so now that we're... We've, um, we've made our second DC. So now what? What's our next? What is our next tactical choice? What should we do? So I think French, as you guys all know and hate French, most of you, is a really strong and strong sieve and H two, because if he goes H three, like some sieves when H three goes H three and they just start spamming in arms, you don't have a counter in H two. Um, some sieves do and some sieves don't. Well, French has the knight, so you can just counter that. So if you're playing this game in H down, like let's say H3 is gonna macro towards an H up now, we can just contain the map, keep our, like we're just gonna put all our units here, deny any relic gathering, and we're gonna win the game. So he can't H up. Um, that would basically kill him. He could try to get a second PC as well. But we're, we would be up in tempo and we also produce hills faster since we're French and the two second difference is basically a four second difference on 2TC so we're gonna outfill him a lot um, well not a lot but quite a bit because also our second is a lot earlier than him and we've scouted that he's not on stone so right now we just need to mass units so what are we gonna mass? well he's going by horseman to counter our um, knight archer and what I like to do um, which a lot of French people don't, French players don't. Add a barracks, go pike. Um, it counts as his entire comp. Because like pike on pike is fine and we have archers to pick up the pikes and then pike on or against horsemen is amazing. So I think this is an underrated thing that people could do instead of just playing knight archer only, which is very micro heavy and very difficult to um, do properly when you could just, if he just storms at you with at like, uh, you know, 20 horsemen, 20 pike, and you have pike archer, uh, sorry, archer knight. It's very hard to keep your archers from dying to the horsemen. Because if you try to defend with your knights, they're gonna die to the pikes, and micro wise it's really tough. So we're getting scouting information, we see his mass, we see that he's still trading more. So we see that he's committed to all inning. Uh, he's not on stone. Scouting information, when you're trying to play at a higher level, very valuable, very important. So now, the timer is on him, like he's the one that has to respond to what I'm doing. I have made this economic expansion, I'm giving myself, like, I'm winning the game because, you know, I'm pulling ahead. So he has to do something, and we know this. So rather than just being like, oh, we're friends, we need to go aggressive, we need to, you know, make rams and kill him. No, he's the one that needs to do something right now, so we're chilling. Um, and he's coming forward with his army. And we're going back as far as, like, as much as we can. Without wanting to forfeit this gold mine. We're adding pikes now. And we're just, you know, telling him, leave, leave me alone. Um, and in the meanwhile, we're building this hill lead. So we see that he's heading in the direction of his DC, so we're gonna follow that. So this was also a bit of a choice moment, is do you want to start taking off pikes? And I think that would be a mistake, because the horseman could wrap around and then you have a clash here, which could be, you know, way less advantageous spot than to fight on your on your TC, where you're gonna have TC fire. So I think wrapping around, we kind of just wrap around to wherever he goes, that's where we go. So don't take the fight uh, unnecessarily. And now we're just chilling, we're adding a lot of pikes, we're on bold barracks now. We're just spamming units, and he has to do something still, like I've said many times now. And we see, okay, he's making a ram, so let's not do anything. If someone is making a ram, you wait for them to come. Um, you know, you have defender advantage, you can see. 
So we're just gonna wait here. We know he's gonna attack here soon enough. So we're gonna have TC Fire to help us out. Now, okay, I will, I will just talk about micro a little bit. So micro-wise, whenever you're playing this composition, um, we're playing... At, we have 14 archers, 7 pike, 6 knights. So the archer counts, you always want to have enough to one-shot pikes, so you can just right-click and it dies, right-click and it dies. Um, and then the, the knights, you want to use them in a way that they're blocking off horsemen as much as they can, but not dying to pikes. So how I like to control this army is that the uh, I have my knights in the control group to pull back and forth, like trying to avoid pikes. I have my archers in the control group to right click the uh, pike one at a time. And I do not have my pikes in the control group because it's too hard. You know, controlling three different units is difficult. And they don't need that much controlling, you just want to have them in the mix and they're going to do a lot of damage and they're going to make it really difficult for him to attack you. Um, so we take a charge, and now we're we're putting we're killing off pikes with our archers. You see us controlling the the archers, and now that the pikes are getting too close to all my knights, that's when I take my leave. I'm gonna protect my archers. So what I see a lot of people do wrong in terms of micro. I didn't really mean to make this video about micro, but I'm just gonna include it. Um, some people would put like their archers here and then their knights here. You kind of want to have everything mixed together, it's better, because otherwise the horsemen are just going to go to your archer and you have nothing there to protect. So, strangely enough, it can be really beneficial to just have your archers like inside the entire thing, um, because then they can't really die, <laughs> which sounds weird, but I'd like to fight that way. So we can see our archers picking off uh, pikes, our pikes aren't being micros, and our knights are trying to take as much little damage from the pikes as we can. Uh, the pikes got cleaned up. Um, yeah, we killed a ram, we hold our TC, the game is over. We've won. Uh, at the higher level, this is just like GG, because uh, our army survived, we're on the villa lead from the, second, from the TC expansion. Um, he can't really come back anymore. So now the, qu the question becomes, how do we fin finish this game? So that's like the last question I will have this video. How do you actually win? If your answer is get a blacksmith to get rams, no, 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 that's a mistake. Rams are really poor investment, especially against a Civ like HRE. Uh, it's gonna have emergency repair. So, a really strong way to finish a game is you just completely stranglehold them out of resources. So we're gathering this faster fish, we just want to deny his fish. And as long as he's stuck in his base, like his sheep will eventually run out. And then what is he gonna gather? Like there's nothing for him to gather. If he has to make farms, like he's already behind an army, uh, adding farms now would be so much of an investment, he's just completely dead. So what I really recommend in these sort of games is just deny the access to the natural resources um, without going for the kill. Like you're just putting yourself so far ahead economically that you can just like mass units while he can't because make farms, you can H up. And then once you hit H3, you can just get the second ring on the blacksmith. And with second ring on the blacksmith, you can do anything you want. You can just dive into it, you see. Nothing dies, you just win. So we're just chilling, we're just gonna put our army here. This is our space. And you know, what do you wanna do about it? We're not gonna go like inside the TC range, we're not gonna take TC fire. We're just living in the spot from now on. While being on TTC against one, so while having the economic advantage behind it. Picking up as many pikes as we can. Um, healing up our low HP knights. And yeah, good luck, you know, like, up to you to reply. Um, so he has food fills here, so he has to take the fight. If he doesn't take the fight, he's gonna lose more fills. It's also GG that way. So we have a last fight. Uh, my own is way superior to than his from surviving all that in the earlier fight. We're just still just picking up pikes. And that's game. So this was a short 
game. It was only 13 minutes, but I'm, uh, I'm really proud of this game. I think I played it exactly how I wanted to. Um, pulling back my army at the right time, making the right decisions. And I think this game really showcases just how much it is about decision and not so much about, um, you know, your ability to control units or like your, like whatever, like micro and everything. Of course it matters, but um, so much of this game is just decision making. So yeah, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two and um, let me know if you have questions. If you, And also like, tell me what your answers to the questions were, even if they were different than mine. That doesn't mean they have to be bad or like you could explain your reasons for it. Like it's interesting to talk about. And I think discussing and talking about the different uh, strategies is also really helpful. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Um, and uh, I hope to see a lot of comments and everything. I really enjoy it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'll see ya.